Come Holy Spirit, come fill my heart, refresh my soul. This is your season of grace come with your host, Spirit, Patrick Henry Eden. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Mapping the supernatural. Mapping, mapping. Map, M-A-P, map, mapping the supernatural. A map is a representation of a territory. So a map represents a territory showing where things are, showing positions. Showing landscapes, stuffs that constitute the territory. The map of a Quibom state shows you where different places in a Quibom state where they are. The map of a Quibom state will show you that this, in the south, you are likely to see Mbu, Oron, maybe. So, but that is the map of a Quibom state. So when you look at the map, you have an idea of how the land of a Quibom state looks like. Is there a river? You will see the river. Is there a mountain? You will see the mountain. Is there a factory, an industrialized area? You will see it. So mapping has to do with un understanding identifying and understanding how things are positioned, where things are in a location, in a territory. It gives you familiarity. A map familiarizes you with the territory even before you move around the territory. Am I talking to somebody? That means mapping has to do with interpretation. Hallelujah. Because things are seen as representation to guide you. So by looking at the map, you will know whether to go left or right or to stay where you are. If somebody was looking for you and you are supposed to be in a particular location. So a map gives you some kind of idea on how to move around, how to deal with situations. The military, whether it's Air Force, Navy, or Army, they cannot do without map. So mapping has to do with finding out details of how things are and where things are in a particular territory or place. So when we talk about mapping the supernatural, it means finding out details of how things are and where things are in the supernatural territory that affects our life. You will understand how the supernatural is positioned, how things are and where they are in your supernatural territory. And to understand how these things work against you. And when you understand how they work against you, you now know how to deal with them, how to enforce the order you are looking for. Shout, hallelujah. Amen. Say, order. order. Let us define supernatural. Before we define supernatural, we first of all define natural. Natural from nature. Natural has to do with the physical. The physical that is observable, measurable, predictable. So natural has to do with the physical. Say physical. physical. Touch something around you. Just touch. Touch something. Have you touched something? Yes. Can you feel it? Yes. That's physical. Can you name it? Check what you touch. Can you name it? That's physical. 
can you can you try to weigh it can you try to weigh it you try to weigh what you touch give value to it that is physical can you observe people around you hello what am i doing do what i do oh beautiful that is physical that means you can observe me you can predict me you can measure me you can touch me you can feel me that is physical so that's natural so this is a natural realm look at an ac you know what that ac is doing it's blowing some stuff and you feel it you can predict that when it is turned off from the power source it ceases to work so you can predict it you can measure it you can either increase the, the cold level or decrease it. You can make it warmer or colder. Am I talking? That's natural. That's natural. When we talk about supernatural, the greatest word in defining supernatural is beyond, beyond, above these two words. So supernatural is above the natural, beyond the natural. That's it. Whereas the natural is a physical realm, tangible, touchable, palpable, measurable, observable, measurable, tangible. Whereas that's the natural, physical. The supernatural is beyond your physical Faculties you cannot touch with your hand, you cannot see with your physical eyes, you cannot perceive with your physical perception because it is beyond the physical. That means the hand with which you touch what you touch, you cannot use that same hand to touch the supernatural, it is beyond that hand. Am I talking to somebody? receive understanding say i receive that means the faculty that works for you in the natural does not work for you in the supernatural it is beyond it is beyond your sight beyond your taste beyond your feeling the supernatural is as real or more real than the natural in the supernatural there is a gathering like this there are gatherings like this there are things there are places there are people there are beings the only difference between the two is that whereas you can measure this one relate with this one talk about this one because of your natural faculty ability in the supernatural, you cannot, with this same sight, hearing, you cannot connect that one. At some moments, the, the, the curtain separating supernatural and the natural can be taken away such that you have a glimpse of the supernatural and sometimes you don't even know how to describe it but be careful when we talk about the supernatural supernatural is large and endless so when people talk about supernatural super manifestation be very careful in the supernatural we talk about the realm the order of god and beings associated with god like angels and other divine mark, mark the word divine god and other divine beings like angels and other stuff other beings but still within that supernatural you you have the devil satan you have demons you have what i call rock rock spirits rock spirits Spirits that are malicious, wicked, 
doing things to harm people, rook, wicked, demonic entities. All of this is in the supernatural. So the supernatural is like a continent, so to say. But all of this, the same, the same place, the same place. And there can be a movement, can be roaming around. The one who sits at top and the owner, the ruler, the authority, the greatest and the highest and the real authority of the supernatural is God. All other rogue spirits are spirits that originally were under the authority of God, but that rebelled and revolted. Since they are spirit beings, they still remain in the supernatural because they are not physical. So they are still in the supernatural, but they are not good. That's why you talk about demons. Demons can be anywhere, but they live in the supernatural. In the supernatural, since there is a demarcation, so to say, between the physical and the spiritual, between the natural and the supernatural, the law governing the natural does not bind on the supernatural. And the law binding on the supernatural does not necessarily, may not necessarily bind on the natural. So to build a bridge for the natural or the supernatural to operate freely, to have access to the natural and operate, they need natural beings. For the supernatural to have influence on the natural at the serious, tangible level, to influence things, to orchestrate things, to move things, to affect things, they need natural beings. That's why both God and any evil spirit needs primarily a human being to operate. But in most cases, most likelihood is that God will need another man to save another man. That is why there will always be need for somebody to answer a call. If you understand me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Pay attention. There will always be need for somebody to answer the call. There will always be need for somebody who is close to a, in a family to God. In every family you go to, you will meet one way or the other. Somebody, while others are singing and dancing at home, he just feels inclined to go to church without even knowing why he is going to church. Am I talking to somebody? Why? Because the supernatural God who knows that the, the larger family needs to receive from him will draw somebody who will become a connection, a medium. Say medium. medium. So many of us who are sitting down here, it's not because you are good. It's not your holiness. The one who wants to build a bridge between the supernatural and your natural has brought your attention so that you can become a medium. Because without a being, a physical being here at the natural level, being at the use or, you know, being at the disposal, the service of the supernatural, it would be almost impossible, not, possi not impossible with God, but very extremely difficult for God to actualize what he has in mind on earth without somebody being a medium. When Adam fell, he needed Noah. And the scripture says, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Everyone was wicked. It was a generation that God regretted ever creating man. But the scripture says, but Noah found. That means God always preserves somebody. God always looks for somebody. And sometimes as humans, we can become arrogant. 
Somebody telling you, I pray for a sick and a sick got healed. I spoke and it came to pass. And so there is a likelihood that one will become bloated in the mind. And I am not, and I am extraordinarily shut up. Tell somebody, shh. It is nothing of your extraordinariness. The owner of life, the creator of the natural, and the one who is the CEO of both the supernatural and the natural just needed a medium in order to reveal his works. Shout hallelujah. Like many of you sitting down here, you just thought, oh, this super spiritual warfare. I want to go and say, no, no, no. God is the one drawing you. That's why when you allow him to succeed in you, you are wise. When you allow him to have his way in your life, you are not the best in your family. You are not the most prayerful. It's just that he's drawing you for a purpose. There is always a purpose. If you ask me, why do I stand here carrying microphone? I don't know. The only thing I know is that God has a purpose. I don't have any detail. Because I know it's not the one who will it. It's not the one who run it. It is the one that God showed mercy. Shall mercy. If you understand the workings of God, you have less trouble. <laughs> Glory to God. So God needs a medium. And yet Gabriel needed to announce that Jesus would be born, but he did not announce to another angel. He announced to a physical human person in a territory, in a, a place called Nazareth. And the virgin's name was called Mary. And the angel said, God, you have found favor with God. You shall conceive and have a child. You shall name him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. It was a communication from the supernatural. But that was what God intended to do on the natural. Which means it is the supernatural that controls what happens on the physical? Glory to God. Still in that supernatural, those rogue spirits, Satan and his army, they need medium. The supernatural uses primarily human beings, but not exclusively human beings. God can use a place. God can use a thing. So when we talk about anointing oil, we talk about maybe water, God can use substance to do his work. He has control over everything. But the primary medium is a human being. The same way the devil uses not only human being, but other beings. He can use a thing. He can use a cat. He can use a dog. It can use a place that you move into a place you enter into trouble just as in some cases people go to a place and become pregnant people travel to different mountains different places in the world just to encounter that means God is using a place we are mapping the supernatural <laughs> Now, be very careful. In every family, there is a tension. The devil looks for a candidate, a medium to use. Be careful your siblings. The point is that when your heart, your action, your thoughts, your words, when you are open to the satanic, you are most likely to be used by the negative supernatural to affect the physical and the natural. And when you make yourself available to God, you are likely to be used by God to affect others at the physical, natural level. Shout hallelujah. At this point, I invite you to lift up your two hands. Stand up and lift up your two hands. You will declare with me with all your heart. Say, Father, I stand here before you consciously, intentionally. I ask in any way I had opened my life to be used as 
a wrong medium to affect life. Show me mercy. Speak that prayer. Pray it out. Say, Lord, show me mercy. Bring me deliverance in any way. It had become a wrong medium. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you just keep standing? Look at me. When you talk about a witch, a wizard is a medium. A medium for supernatural manifestation, but for evil. The intention of witchcraft is to destroy everything in the, in the neighborhood. Where there is a witch or wizard, the likelihood is that things will be affected negatively. If it visits you, it will affect you. If it stays with you, it will affect you. If it's from among you, it will affect you. Why? It's a negative medium from negative supernatural oppression. Secret cult, the same thing. Medium. And in different ways, we'll talk about it. But when you talk about a prophet, when you talk about prayer warrior, when you talk, you talk about God's children at different level, these are media also. For God to reach out. Such that in a family that you have somebody who is close to God and has the power to pray. It could be the, a sister or somebody in the family is in labor and the person does not even know. You wake up one morning, you cannot go out. Your spirit is praying. If you have ever had such experience, let me see your hand. You wake up, you don't know why you cry. And your spirit is groaning. Why? Because you are a medium. Such moments, you don't need to know details. Just yield your heart. Yield your soul. Because you are being used by the one who supervises over the supernatural and the natural. Which is why the greatest, uh, the greatest blessing you can be on earth is just to be available unto God. So that the day God needs a medium to stop an accident, you will be available. It's true. There are many accidents that happen that should not have happened. God says, he told, uh, uh, he told Ezekiel, I was looking for somebody who will stand in the gap. Stand in the gap how? The supernatural needs the natural to stand in the gap. And when we say supernatural, be careful. Not every supernatural is God. Because that's the place of deception right now. There are many people who use the power of Satan actively in what they call churches. And they tell people you will see supernatural manifestation. It is actually true. It is supernatural manifestation. Why? Because what they do is beyond nature. It's beyond what your eyes can understand, what your, your mind can comprehend. It is a sign, but it is not necessarily from God. That is where Christianity is in trouble right now, more than ever. It has always been so. But now, in Africa, more than ever, not only in Africa, in America, there's active worship of Satan in church. The movement of homosexual and lesbian is satanic movement. If right now you are listening to me, you are involved in homosexual action and lesbian action, you are in a satanic move. satanic move. Immorality is a movement of Satan. And it is coming to a time in church, those things are taken for granted. People don't want to worry. In places, pastors don't want to worry people about the issue of morality because we don't want, don't want to look outdated. It's an active movement of Satan in the church. We are in the last days and the cardinal mark of the last days is deception. We are in the time of deception. That's why every time you have to watch yourself. You can be actively involved in satanism and you don't know. Secret cult is a mighty move of satan. And there are many cultists who sit in front rows of the churches. 
They just feel they don't kill anybody. It's just a fraternity or confraternity for connection and all that. It's a movement of Satan. Why? It is antichrist. Instead of seeking help from God, you seek help from that confraternity. And church becomes a cover face. It's satanism. So when we talk about supernatural, be careful. Tell somebody, be careful. You hear people come to church, they do things. They say, a woman, something will come out of the body. This will come out of this. And people, ah, come and see supernatural. That's the realm of magic. You don't need all those stupid things for salvation. For there is no other name given unto men by which we can be saved. Jesus, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, 12. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Say, in the Lord. In the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles. Say, the wiles. The wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle. The word wrestle there is a serious word. When you talk about wrestling, if you have ever been wrestled with contention, fight, struggling, for we do not wrestle, we do not fight, we do not struggle against, we do not contend, we, don't, we do not strive against flesh and blood. That means we, are not, we don't struggle against the natural. That's what we talk about. A natural flesh and blood. Touch your flesh. If you pierce your flesh, blood will come out. That means he's talking about the natural. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities. These are words of authority and control. Principalities in principal rulers. Principal. When you talk about the principal of a secondary school, as the name implies, is the ruler, the controller. So when you say principalities, we are talking about controlling spirits, controlling beings in the supernatural. Their work is to control what happens in finance, to control what happens in the gospel ministry. They can let people go to church, but they try to influence that people don't accept Jesus. People don't accept truth. That people can accept that they be healed, but to accept to give up sin and be circumcised, they control, they negate. These are things you cannot go far in the gospel ministry until you topple them, you overthrow them. The church remains a social group until they are toppled. That's what makes a place you gather. You see a gathering of young people. They walk around almost naked and it becomes like uh, hug me, I hug you kind of place and all that. There is a controlling principality that makes lesbianism attractive, homosexual, a currency for trading, immorality. The preacher and the preach. Anything can happen. Hug me, I hug you. Wash my back, I wash your back. A controlling force says, feel church, but don't know Jesus. You are free. Yeah. Lift up your two hands and say, I am, I am free from every controlling force. Stand up and shout Jesus that in the name of Jesus, I am free from every controlling force. Stand up and speak with all your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am free from every controlling force. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me give you another thing. These are controlling forces making marriages miserable. That over time a man can despise the woman. And a woman can despise a man. And the love between them is dead. And attraction between them is numb. It empowers immorality, adultery, controlling forces. 
making sure the first idea and the best idea of God. Marriage is the first idea of God after creation, after creating man. The best idea, when God brought birth, Adam was not excited, but when he brought a woman, Adam shouted, at last, this is flesh of my flesh. The most exhilarating, exciting thing that happened in the garden was marriage. So Paul said, we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities, principal demonic influences, control. The word principal means control in church. Against powers, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. The darkness of this age. So when we talk about the spirit of darkness, they are of the age. Orchestrating what people do. Pop culture, dominating in popular culture. Making people feel to sing in a particular way is also not to know God. To be young is to hate God and to hate authority of parents and civility. Controlling influences. Lift up your right hand and say, I am free, I am free. from every controlling influence. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness. You can talk about spiritual hosts. It means a heart. A hot host, work, mudum, 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 mudum spirit. Enjoy, enjoy, mudum, mudum. Spiritual hosts, it means supernatural hosts. Supernatural hosts, these are hosts like flies, they are like flies. When you are in immorality, they follow you wherever you go. A man that opens up the door in adultery, the hosts, you give access to them, they follow you home. Those are the things that can make you look down on your wife and you slap your wife like you slap a pig. Because you are falling into them. When flies are after you, you cannot be steady. Mm, mm, mm. You see some people, they are never steady. They sit in church, their minds are never steady. They cannot focus. Worship doesn't make sense. The word of God is stupid because of the host. Am I talking to somebody? Sin is not just that it would take somebody to hell. Sin opens up the supernatural negatively for you to affect you on earth and makes you a vulnerable subject so that you can easily be influenced. That's what sin does. It breaks the hedge. The hedge of security, the hedge of protection, the hedge of the divine around you. And these spiritual hosts of wickedness, these are demonic influences in secret cult that will make a young man beat another one to death, hack another one to death. Now, when we are talking about enforcing order in the supernatural, it is bringing these guys to stand still and making sure that they don't influence you. They don't influence your marriage. Telling them, you don't touch my finance. You don't touch my husband. You don't touch my children. Because these are rook spirits that can come upon your children. Your little child becomes extraordinarily violent, melancholic, terrible, stubborn. Some of them can come upon a child, it becomes sickly forever. And they say that if no lab can detect, can detect anything, but yet your child is not healthy. So the issue of enforcing order in the supernatural is making sure they stay where they should not, where they should stay, and making sure they don't cross limits. Am I talking to somebody? When you talk about every time a man wants to come and marry me, something happens, something happens. Shh. There is need for order. Enforcing order. Whenever I am pregnant, after three months, it comes to shh. Order. 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 The children waking up in the morning and falling sick without explanation. Order. There is just one thing I will give you the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, that name works in every situation, in every condition, in every circumstance, in every family. That name works. 
Let me tell you, I know that name works. When you sin, that name works. How does the name work when you sin? To bring you salvation. You repent and it will deliver you. When you are awake, that name works. That name is all the Father has given you. So you have no reason to fail. I say you have no reason to fail. You have no reason to go to hell. God has given us the greatest revelation that has entered my spirit and can never, can never leave me is that there is nothing God will have done that he has not done. He has finished everything in his son. When Jesus Christ said on the cross, it is finished, he was not stupid. He was saying the truth. It is finished. Glory to God. Let me drop something. Glory to God. Let's meet a sorcerer. Tell somebody, let us meet a sorcerer. Acts of Apostles chapter 13 from verse 6 to 12. Acts of Apostles chapter 13 from verse 6 to 12. Now, when they had gone through the island to Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet. When you say a sorcerer, somebody who uses magical power, he fought, he fought, maybe he fought, maybe he fought, the same thing. A sorcerer. Somebody who operates from the supernatural but wickedly. Somebody who has access, who taps into the, the dark negative energy of the supernatural to oppress, to execute wickedness. Sorcerer, a false prophet. This man combined his trait. He was a sorcerer. He used the evil magical power to pretend to be a prophet. And that's what happens in many places. It didn't start today. A false prophet, a Jew whose name was Bad Jesus, who was with the proconsul. The proconsul was a ruler of the region. You see, those people with such powers, they are interested with rulers. The reason is because as a proconsul, that means if somebody influences you, you can influence others. And what you have will become subject to the kingdom of darkness. Who was with the proconsul? The proconsul was there, like, like maybe the local government administrator or the governor. And the man's name is Segius Paulus, a Roman, a Roman administrator, an intelligent man. Being an intelligent man means he was open to discussing with this evil man. This man called for Barnabas and Saul and sought to hear the word of God. He wanted salvation. But Elimas, the sorcerer, for so his name is translated. So sorcerer means Elimas. So this sorcerer withstood them. And I said he opposed them. He opposed, but Elima the sorcerer for opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Now you can see this Elima is a mean. Is being used to darkness to turn somebody from salvation. It was not that man. It was the higher power that used the man. The proconsul wanted salvation. He wanted to hear the word. But the deceiver. I just want you to know when we talk about people in authority, whether it's a permanent secretary, he said, the man cannot sign. He doesn't want to sign. He doesn't want to sign. Do you know what sorcerer? Sometimes we talk about managers. So a man that will see who is sitting upon my file. When did you fight with him? When did you quarrel with him? Nothing. Just a sorcerer. Wrong negative influences that will not want you to break through. Controlling forces. Now you now understand what it means to impose order on the supernatural. When evil people cook themselves and cook human beings and do all sort of things to appear for influence, and God's children tell them to fast one day, then do it or fast. 
Tell them to enter into prayer. The thing is punishment. Tell them to sow seed. Is it punishment? Go and ask those in secret calls what they do with the money they take from government. They use it to sponsor satanism. They stay in the most expensive hotels. And when they come to town, they take the best of our children, sleep and defile some, and use some for ritual. So sit for the gospel to be preached on air. And you say, ah, this pastor is looking for money. And the work of Satan is spreading. And the work of God is finding it difficult to make a headway. And we empower Satan and we come and be crying in church. And you don't empower the grace of God over your life. If you understand me, let me see your hand. When we talk about enforcing order. So people like Elimas, look at what happened. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit. Now more than ever, we need men and women who are filled with the Holy Spirit. People in offices, people in bounds, people who can rise, filled with the Holy Spirit and speak to an office. I said, whoever sits on a desk that will not allow my file to go, people can speak not out of fear, but out of power. In the Holy Spirit. Now more than ever we need to release into the society men and women who are filled with the Holy Spirit. Do we now talk of the Holy Spirit? We don't talk much about the Holy Ghost. We're in a motivation season. What sort of motivation do not open doors? The power of the Holy Ghost. Scripture says, not by power, not by might, but by my Spirit. You cannot enforce order in the supernatural in the flesh. You cannot wake up from the bed of adultery and enforce order over your child that is in convulsion. You cannot wake up from the place of immorality and enforce order upon the life of your mother that is about dying. You cannot rise from the place of useless gossip and enforce order upon the life of your friend that is about dying in accident. You cannot. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at the limas and said, you are a child of the devil. Did you hear this? Though you are physical, you represent your father, the devil. It means you serve the evil proconsul of heaven, of the heavens, the wicked principality, an enemy of everything that is right. Can you imagine the enemy of people's pension being paid? The enemy of people's rights and benefits being paid? The enemy of people's benefits? The enemies of people's twins and children? The enemies... Office that supervises over, over, over miscarriage. People everywhere in schools taking advantage of lack of coverage over children and wrecking havoc. Not you. You see, you are a child of the devil and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you, will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? You will stop. Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind and for a time you will be unable to see the light of the sun. This is enforcing order. From now you shall no longer talk nonsense. From now you shall no longer oppose the gospel. From now you shall no longer de de deceive me. From now you shall no longer take away my suitor. From now you shall no longer take away my children. From now you shall no longer orchestrate miscarriage. From now we are talking about enforcing the order. I don't know which sorcerer has been intimidating your blessing. I don't know which sorcerer has been standing against your progress. I don't know which sorcerer has been standing against your light. I don't know which sorcerer has been saying you shall not go to the next level I don't know but we need somebody who is filled with the Holy Spirit who can say now the hand of the Lord is against you now the hand of the Lord is against you now St. Paul is standing as a medium of the most high and he's talking he didn't say God may God's hand be upon you he said the hand of God is upon you he is making, taking advantage of the one he represents do you know who you are do you know whom you represent? Are you the child of the Mosai? Do you know your father? Then you can tell that person. You can tell that demon. 
Now the hand of God is upon you. Now the hand of my father is upon you. Now the blood of Jesus is upon you. Now the death of Jesus and his resurrection is upon you. Now the wounds of Jesus is upon you. Now the stone that was rolled away is upon you. Now the name of Jesus is upon you. It's upon you accident. It's upon you limitation. It's upon you confusion. It's upon you the orchestration of wickedness. Everything that causes miscarriage. Order. Outreach or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.